Church, come on. Amen. Come on, Jesus' return is close. Amen. We're we're in the last days. We're not in the end days. We're in the last days right now. And I mean, the signs of the times and all the stuff that's going on, we got to remember, amen? So people need salvation. The harvest is plentiful. In fact, we're about to get into that right now. It's funny because I was thinking about that stuff. You know, there's a lot of people that need to be saved. Who here in the knows their neighbors that need to be saved? Do you know if a neighbor needs to be saved? What you ought to do is write down their name and every day pray for them. In fact, put an alarm for 316. I heard this guy at this our men's meeting. We had about seven guys in the, our men's meeting on at the at the IHOP, and this gentleman he set his alarm for 316. So every day at 316, in the in the PM and in the AM, his alarm goes off. He gets up. He wakes. He either wakes up or he just stops what he's done and prays. Come on, John 316. So we gotta be praying. Amen. So be praying for your neighbors. Be praying for your family members. Be praying for your friends. People that you know, and if God puts someone in a name in your heart or in your mind, remember that's the Holy Spirit putting it there for you to pray for them. Okay? And you could be even having a dream about them. You'd be sleeping, and if you hear a name and you wake up, pray for them. Okay? Remember that, church. We got to be praying. Hallelujah. So let's pray right now. As you open up your Bibles to Luke chapter 10, let's go ahead and travel there. That's the address, Luke chapter 10. Amen? Let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, that your presence is here. Your presence is in us. Stir us up, Lord. And Lord, I pray, God, that you use me, Lord. As I read your word, Father, give me wisdom. Give me words to speak. Let it be uh, some revelation, Lord, from you on what to say. I thank you, Holy Spirit, you are a teacher. Holy Spirit, just speak through me. And use me, Lord. I pray, God, as we hear your word, Father, let it come alive to us as the author is inside of us. And God, we come to you, Lord, giving you everything. Thanking you as we give you our heart, we give you our lives, we give you everything. We surrender all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Say, I surrender all. I surrender come on, everybody say that. I surrender all. I surrender we got to surrender all. And remember that, church. We have to surrender all. Amen to him. Amen. Let's surrender all to Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, as we're going to start the book of Luke, Luke chapter 10, we already started it, but we're continuing. This is about how Jesus sends the 70, okay? Now, He sends the 70, okay? Verse 1 on chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them to and to before his face and into every city and place whither he himself would come. Now look at this. In other words, he's sending out 35 pairs. 35 pairs. 35 groups of two. 70 people. Now a lot of people think that he just sent them out just that one day and they came back in the afternoon. No, 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 no. He sent them out for a little bit of time. Why is he sending them out? Just like us, we need to be sent out. We are called sent ones. Amen? If you are the one to be called to go, we are called to go. Amen? All of us. Wherever you at, your work, your school, your friends, your neighbors, God is sending you to talk to them about, about Him. Amen? We need to speak the truth the true gospel to every, every breath. Amen? Think about this. It's a big calling to a left. All of us have it. Amen? Verse 2, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. At that time there were few laborers, and at this time, do you think there's few laborers still? Why? There's so many people that are not saved. There's so many people in darkness. Who here would be a witness to that? Look what's happening in the world. Look what's happening with all these crimes. Look what's happening with all the, the chaos. The darkness. The hatred. And it's going to increase, church. I'm letting you know right now. It's going to come. More is going to come. We need to be ready. Are you ready? 
Are you ready to stand your ground? Are you ready to stand on the word of God and be a true disciple of Jesus Christ and to be a laborer? God is sending us out, church. It's our, it's our mission. Reaching out. We're called to reach out. Do you hear me? This is the great, the great mission that God is wanting us to do. We need to reach more people. Amen? Yeah. Who here believes that? Yeah. Come on, you got to do it. And it's something simple. You can just tell your friend Jesus loves you. You can just plant seeds. You can say, hey, I want you to come to church. Invite them to church. Or you can tell them, you know what? Why don't you watch online? Or why don't you, you know what I mean? Let the Lord uh, touch your heart and see what God can do. Amen? If you, if you know someone is going through stuff, someone is going through troubles, guess what? They're going through it, but it's better off to go through the troubles with the Lord. Amen? And tell them they need Jesus. Amen. Who here believes that? Come on. Amen? Amen? See, we're called to tell people. We're called to, to go out because, like Jesus said, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord of the harvest. How many of you pray to God and say, Lord, uh, just put someone in my path today that I can witness to them, that I can share my testimony, that I can share what's going on in my life so they can see what used to happen in my life and now what God has pulled me through. Amen? See, God's not pulling you through it. He's pulling you through it. Amen. And he's, if he has to drag us kicking and screaming, I don't mind. Hallelujah. Come on, Lord. Take me. Amen. That's one thing. See, we got to understand something. God ain't putting you through it. Amen. That's right. That's right. You hear me? Pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. It's a big harvest here in Las Cruces. You know that? It's huge. They claim only 10% of people are going to church. If you have 100,000 people, so 10,000 people. How about the other 90,000 people? You see, they're hurt, they're lost, they're crazy because they don't know Jesus. I'm not saying they're, you know, mentally crazy. But I mean, it's, it's crazy if you don't know Jesus. Come on. I was crazy. I thought I was normal. To me, what the normal was is not the norm. Amen? I know I'm a peculiar person. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then he said, verse 3, Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among the kitty cats. Little kitties are going to... See, oh, you can tell people, Jesus loves you. Oh, thank you so much. Oh. How many have, have you ever told somebody that Jesus loves you and they tell you off? Come on. Come on. Look what he said right there in verse 3. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Do you see that? And wolves, man, they'll tear you up. A lamb? But see, he does, he, he had said something else I heard in the word. It says, to be cunning as a serpent, but gentle as a lamb. Or a dove. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a dove. But I just, I don't know. Ugh. But still, if you think about it, the wolves are trying to eat people up. We go out, testify the gospel. Let the word of God penetrate their hearts. Lift up the name of Jesus. Remember what Jesus said? If I be, don't be laughing. I know I messed up on that scripture. <laughs> it is true. To be gentle as a dove, but cunning as a, as a serpent. Why right? is it, why is it why a serpent? serpent? Yes, why are cunning? I call it cunning. And gentle as a dove. Okay, I know. Sure. Amen. But see, a sheep, a lamb, is a precious animal. Amen. Better than a goat, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Okay, but my wife's like, okay, we can do that. Amen. So like I said, they are wolves out there. And a lot of times there's wolves in sheep's clothing. Come on. Do you hear me? You tell by their fruits. 
you tell by their fruits. Because they might look at, they might try to look like a sheep and do sheepanese uh, language. <laughs> you know, Christianese, you know, glory to God, you know, stuff like that. But they're wolves in sheep clothing. And you need to how you discern, you tell by their fruits. Amen? Watch them. Amen. Have discernment. The Lord, the Holy Spirit will give you discernment to discern those things so you can tell by their fruits. Amen? And then you'll know. But then you keep on telling them and praying for them. Okay? okay. Verse 4. Carry neither purse nor scri scri script nor show shoes and salute no man by the way. He's saying just go. In other words, and unto what, who, whatsoever house ye enter first, say peace be to this house. In other words, he's saying to bring the Prince of Peace. Tell him peace by the name of Jesus. The true, the Greek definition of peace there is bringing the peace of Jesus. You see, and you say that, say peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. In other words, like I said before this in verse, in verse 4, it says carry me the purse. In other words, what he's saying, put your trust in God that he will provide for you. Do you understand? Because see, he will provide us. When you go to people and you tell them, a lot of times, man, I've been there when I was telling somebody, and all of a sudden, hey, you know what, we're having a cookout. Why don't we have some carne asada with us? Okay? Sure. You see what I mean? You'll be, you'll, you'll be provided. You will have food. You will have, you, you know what I mean? So that he's telling them this. In other words, he said, don't take all the stuff that you want, usually take. Just go. Just go. I'm sending you out. I'm commissioning you. I have appointed you. In verse 1 it says I appointed 70. And that same appointed in the Greek means like almost like someone has appointed someone in, in leadership. Amen? So God is appointing us. Amen? It says in God's word, okay, verse 6, and if the son of peace there, oh no, verse 7, and in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as the gift for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Amen? So it says, says don't complain. If someone wants to give you frijoles, you, give, you eat their beans. Oh, but I want a steak. If someone wants to give you top ramen, eat the top ramen. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> Just put some salsita on there and you're good to go or some tapatio. <laughs> and y'all hungry? <laughs> and whatsoever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Verse 9. And heal the sick. What did he just say right there? And heal the sick. Any sick will pray for the sick. Please, Lord, can you please help to heal this man? Are we trying to, uh, to barter and say, oh, please, God, I'll make a deal with you. If you do this, God, I know they're going to serve you, God. Please, can you heal them? No, no, what do you say? Look at it. And heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Wow. That's powerful. The kingdom of God has come nigh to you. Amen. The kingdom of God. Verse 10, but into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, even the very dust of your city which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable in the day for Sodom than for that city. And what happened on Sodom and Gomorrah? It was destroyed, right? 
Amen? So he sent him out. Now, did he send him out overnight? No. You see, Jesus was there from the time he was baptized until the time he was crucified was three and a half years of ministry. So he's probably, he sent out the 70 probably for six months. They took off. You see, we got to think about this and, because all of us want, we're in a generation of, of fast food generation. We want things in a hurry. When you put something in the microwave for a minute, you still go, all right, hurry up, hurry up. You ever done that? You know, you're nuking it, and actually you are. I try not to use a microwave, because that's bad. You're nuking it, that's what they call it. You're like, it's like burning from the inside out, hallelujah. You see what I mean? But we are the fast food generation, we want things in a hurry. When God is a God of, of patience and a God of time, He wants the, the, there's two kinds of time. There's chronos time, which is the, Chronos, where they made a chronometer, how they, they measure the time, how time passes by. And Kairos time, which is God's time. You see, we're supposed to walk in Kairos time. We're supposed to be led the Kairos time, not the Chronos time. Because the Chronos time, I'm telling you, time is slipping away. Have you noticed how quick time goes every day? How many of you, when you were little, those of you older than 30, I remember you remember when you were little, all of a sudden the day, all day would take forever by the time the sun went down. And now it's like it, it takes three hours, four hours and the sun's already going down. Times of the days will be shortened, that's what the Bible says. And it's happening right now. Think about it. So don't worry about time. Don't worry about time. We got plenty of time until the, unless the Lord comes and takes us. But if we are if we're working and we're doing the will of the Father, then we won't have to worry. But if you're wasting time and not doing what God has called you to do, then I would say worry. You see, but all I know is this, that he sent them out and told them to go. He sent us out to go. Amen? And I'm just excited about what God is doing. And he appointed people. And I want to appoint people. I want to do stuff like that. I want to see God move. We're coming into a, into a season that, that God is, is bringing up leaders. God is bringing up things. And, and, and us, you see, they were for Jesus. They weren't just with Him. Do you see what I mean? So you need to be for us, not just with us. Because when you're just with us, you're gone. But when you're for something, you do it. Amen? Amen. So that okay, when there's time that a time that people are going to be appointed as leadership, you need to accept that. And then not to be a, a kind of person that complains, <laughs> why didn't he pick me? Well, God is, you know, God will do it. If God, if God wants you to be a leader, it'll happen. I'm letting you know right now. If God's giftings are coming upon you and you're ready, you, you see God stirring up and the gifts are stirring up and all that, you'll get, you'll get appointed. But we're all appointed to go and tell people wherever we go, to people's houses, to your neighbors, to your workforce, to your friends, to your to your to your family. Amen. And we need to tell the family. I tell you what, but that's so one of the hardest ones to tell your family because they remember who you are and what you did, how you were in your past. And that's true. It's true. I'm sorry, but it's true. Verse 13. Woe unto thee. It's a chorusin, chorusin. Woe unto thee that say that. For it is if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Now sitting in sackcloth and ashes was when they were poor vengeance. They believed to just take everything off, cast everything away. And they would do that. That was a custom, okay? But not us. We're, we're just repentive. We're, we're humble. And we just follow God, okay? But if, if but it shall be more tolerable for, for Tyre and Sidon of the judgment than for you. And though thou, and thou Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. Wow. He that heareth, you heareth me. You heareth me. And he that despiseth you despiseth me. And he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. Amen? 
Are you going to despise the Lord, the Father? Oh no. Do you trust in the Lord? It's time for us to trust in the Lord and, and obey His commands and trust in Him and tell people, you know what? I used to be like this, but now I'm like this. Jesus changed me. Je I love Jesus. I, I serve Him. Do, do you want to try it? You know what I mean? Tell what's the worst thing? You go to heaven? Praise the Lord. Come on, people. You got to tell people like that. Why? You got to tell them the truth. Because time is running out, church. Time is running out. Time is running out. Amen. Now, verse 17 is the return of the 70. Verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy. And saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Do you see what he's saying right there? And earlier when we pre-service, before service started, there was a song that I played from Elevation Worship that talked about that. That there's a song that, that talks about that I rejoice in all this, but the more but I rejoice more because why? You'll see. Verse 18. And he had and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. Now this word power is not due to his power. This word power is the power of royalty. Okay, I looked it up. It's the power of royalty. It's a power that's there. That God is giving you power. God is giving you, how can I say this? Authority. authority. Come on, you took it from me. <laughs> There's a song called Authority. Things change in your authority by Elevation Worship. I was playing it earlier too. And it's true. You know, how, how even the guy that, that had his servant, and, and, and he's a man of authority, and he said that you just one word that you say, Jesus, and I believe my, my servant will be healed. And what happened? It says one word on the power of the authority of Jesus. See, so he said right here, verse 19, Behold, I give you, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy now the word power there is the dunamis over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you do you see that yes. nothing shall by any means hurt you look at this verse 20 so wait a minute let me, let me pull myself back so here it is God's given us authority over all these things why? Because they're subjected to the, the, to the kingdom of God. All the principalities, all that stuff is subjected to the authority of the Father and the kingdom of God. Jesus is Lord, right? Yes. Amen? So they're all subjected to that. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, what happens? He said, I give you power. I give you that authority to trample, amen, or to... To tread over on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you believe in verse 19? Yes. yes. Come on church, do you believe it? Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. You've got to believe it church. Amen. Now verse 20. No, notwithstanding in this rejoice not. That the spirits are subject unto you. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. 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 In other words, you're going to worship God in heaven. Praise the Lord. Isn't that more important than having power over authorities? There's nothing. The devil has no authority over you. The devil has no authority over anything. And the only the authority you give him. And all of a sudden, what's more important is the fact that your names are written in heaven. Amen. Because there's going to be two books open. One of the books of, of the things you've done and the, Lamb, the, the Lamb's Book of Life. And if your name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're not going to make it to heaven. You're not going to be there in God's presence. You see, so that's more important to have your name written in heaven. Amen? Yes. So that's more important, right, church? Yes. But you would think, oh, but it's important because I can trade over serpents. I have power and authority over the, de the devils. Yeah, you do. But what's more important is that your names are written in the lambs in the in the book in heaven. And you're that's very important, church. Very important. I'm gonna read it one more time. Notwithstanding, verse 20, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, 
That's pretty, pretty powerful, right? But rather rejoice because your names are written okay. in heaven. Amen. Amen? Amen. Are your name written, is your name written in heaven? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So as we praise Jesus, we see pray, Jesus praise God too. Amen. Let's go. Let's continue four more verses. And we'll end right there. Verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. Do you hear me? In other words, he's like, Oh, Father. Oh, Daddy. I'm a Father. Daddy. Oh, Lord. Oh, Father. Oh, our Father, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. This is he taught him to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see, he's rejoicing. He, he's what? In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. You see that? And said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them into, unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, verse 22. And no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know the Father. In other words, do you hear me? There's a lot of people that don't even know. They try, oh, I, I just, it's only God the Father. What about the Son? And the Holy Spirit. No. So he, look at, when you look at this, what, what is he saying? He's saying right there that, he, that, that God has revealed it. He's, he's hidden it from, from the, the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes even so, Father. For so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son. So since you know the Son, you know the Father. Amen. Did you see that? Amen? And he, and, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. See, the Son has to reveal the Father. Do you hear me? Praise the Lord. Verse 23. And he turned him into his disciples. I mean, turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. You see that? Who here believes they're blessed? Because the things we see, the things we know. And I know everyone here is saved. We don't have no first time visitors. So I know everyone here has received Jesus. And I know you all have, have, have prayed and invited him into your life. And I know through the Son you revealed the Father. Yes. Amen. So you know. You know, you know. So you're blessed, just like he said. Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. See, the devil wants to, wants to blind the eyes of the world from these things. He wants to blind people. And he's blinding people right now. So bad that they're looking for all kinds of, of uh, affirmation and all kinds of stuff. Oh, well, this and that and this and that. Let's cause problems. Let's blow this up. Let's tear this up. Let's steal this up. Let's, let's tear this down. Let's break this down. Let's, 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 let's have my own way because it's all about me and about me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity. And that's what happens, see? Verse 24. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye, which ye see and have not seen them. Do you see that? You should underline that right there. Many prophets and kings, amen, have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Man, I'm going to tell you what, the world here is a lie. 
The word is speaking a lie right now. All across the government, all across the world is a lie. Amen? Just this weekend, they were baptizing people on the corner where that Floyd guy got killed. There were people baptizing people. People who were laborers were out there preaching the gospel. They knew that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There was there any news about that? I saw some pictures of it. I showed a guy, he had a deaf, he had, he had deaf ears, and his ears opened, and he could hear. I was watching that, and I was like, wow. That was through a Christian, a Christian uh, site that I have, I have seen. And they said they were in the corner, the same corner where he was killed. They were baptizing people. They had a tub there, and they were just baptizing people. They were preaching the gospel, getting the people that were marching, getting the people that were causing problems, and telling the true gospel. And they heard, because why God revealed it to them? Their eyes have been, uh, the blinders have been taken off. God wants to reveal it to them. And guess what? It happened. It's happening right now. But also in another country, they, were, they just beheaded a couple of pastors in Syria. And other places, they were burned a couple of churches. And they threw the crosses in front of the homes of people that were supposedly high government people. They were torched on fire. Amen. So what's going on? It's happening, church. Things are happening. You know, in Africa, this big old... These locusts are coming and they're devouring all kinds of stuff. You see, all this stuff is going on. You know what I mean? And look at this. And then it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. I'm just waiting for the great apostasia. I'm getting waiting for the great falling away. And some people are falling away from the true gospel. And it's sad. But we need to stand and know that when God wants to reveal it, He will reveal it. Blessed are those who hear the things. And that see. So you're blessed because you hear and see. You're hearing mother, my voice. I don't know my voice is just a voice. But see, it's a voice that is called by God to say something to you. For you to stand up, be counted, and know that God is for you, not against you. Amen. See, if God be for you, who could be against you? Amen. That's why I say, you're not just with us. You need to be for us. Come on. Amen. They were with, they were for Jesus. They weren't just with him. Amen. A couple, a week ago, remember, we talked about, for they're for us. Remember that? And I remember when I had told, I had told a couple people, even Wally's one of them, I told them, don't just be with me, brother, you need to be for me. You see, and when they're for you, it's different. They lift you up, they pray for you, they'll help, they'll submit to the authority that God has given, and that's what's one thing that needs to be done. And when that happens, see, because see, I'm not just messing around. I don't just go home and relax and do nothing. I'm in prayer. I'm in fast. I'm fasting and praying and asking the Lord, which direction do you want this church to go? I seek the Lord and ask for the vision. I write down the vision. Just as it says in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. That's what we heard too. It says, write the vision down for those that read it while run with it. You see, so I'm with the, I wrote the vision down. We're seeing the, our mission. We're seeing what our vision and our mission for this church is. And we're doing it. Things are happening, church. So you need to be prepared. And you need to be, be for us and not just be with us. And you'll see God move in a mighty way. And it's all the glory to the Lord. It's all glory to the God, to the Lord. Just like I said. Just like I said. I said this. I said this and a couple other pastors are like, wow, they're like, what? where'd you get that from? And I said this, for we go from glory to glory for his glory. And I made a t-shirt about it. I made a t-shirt. I just made a t-shirt just today. We go from glory to glory for his glory. I just made it today. Amen? And that's what we got to do. We got to speak. We got to represent who we are in the Lord. And we got to stand our ground and know that our First Amendment right is to gather, to assemble, freely assemble, and to come together in worship. Okay? Yes. To lay hands on the sick. To pray for the lost. Amen? To share, to deliver, deliver the message, and to be true followers of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, we'll stop right there in verse 25.
Amen. Amen. Wow, we did 24 verses and, and it's, it's 8.30. <laughs> so I'm going to ask um, um, a sister Marie, can you pick up the, the prayer request cards for me? And while there's, she's picking them up, I want to do this in, on, on the, the website, okay? If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to take this opportunity for you to pray and invite Jesus Christ into your life. In other words, are you born again? Are you saved? Uh, so if, if, you have, if you're not and you haven't repented, I want to go in and lead you in a prayer. And uh, so repeat after me. Heavenly Father, please forgive me of anything I've done that has not pleased you. I am sorry. I repent. I know Jesus Christ died on the cross. But I believe in my heart. He rose the third day. He shed his blood. To wash away my sins. So I ask you Jesus. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. From this day forward. I am born again. I am saved. By grace. Through faith. In Jesus Christ. Thank you Jesus. For dying for me. I receive you now. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Now if you pray that out there in La La Land. I call it. On, on the internet, and you pray that for the first time, please uh, inbox us or uh, you email us at uh, Restoration Church uh, LC dot gmail dot com or uh, <laughs> not dot gmail. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Restoration Church LC at gmail dot com. Amen. There it is. We, that's a new. I don't. I didn't put my own personal. Okay, you got it. Thank you. Amen. So we'd like to partner with you. Amen. We want to partner with you, so please come. Uh, pretty soon we're going to be trying to probably do water, water baptisms. We can do it out in the back. I'll get, a tr I'll get a nice big trough that I can get from Horse and Hound. will lend me one. We'll fill it up with water and we'll just go baptize people. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you have been baptized, amen. And if you're, if you're there on, on the online and you live here in Cruces, show up. And then pretty soon come, get signed up for the water baptisms. That we're going to have pretty soon, within a month or two. Yes. All right? So praise the Lord. Well, here are the prayer request cards. What we're going to do is we're going to pray for them. And after we pray for them, uh, tonight at midnight, I'll pray for each one. And then I'll pray a dismissal. And uh, do we have a, a, we have some snacks or there's no first time visitors? No. Okay. Do we have some snacks tonight? No. Uh, no? Uh? Oh, okay. Okay, well, we'll see. But praise the Lord. Amen. So let's go ahead and pray right now, and then we'll pray a prayer of dismissal. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, Lord, as I lift up these prayer request cards, Lord, I lift them up to you, Father God, and I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I, as I pray for them right now, Father, I thank you for salvations. I thank you for healings. I thank you, God, for, for uh, provision. I thank you, Lord, for direction. I thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, your anointing upon these prayer request cards, Lord. Bless them, Father God, as I lift them up to you right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray, God, that you bless them as I pray for them at midnight tonight, that you go forth in front of us. You are a rear guard, Lord, and we thank you for your blessings upon these prayer request cards. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, I lift up everyone in this place, Lord, that you would continue to bless, bless them, Father God, uh, protect them, Father God, and just direct them. Lord, I thank you for provision. I thank you, God, as we give tonight, Father. I thank you that you are God of more than enough. I thank you, God, that you love a cheerful giver. And Lord, those that give, Father God, or those that give online, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. I speak a blessing. I speak a blessing in everybody's life. And I thank you, God, that you go forth with us, with us, Lord, for you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We honor you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone say, Amen, amen and Amen. God bless you all. Have a good night.
We are your people 